Hello world. I'm gonna welcome everybody to today's sell motor documentary. And we're gonna start right here, this house right here. Matt Ferris Avenue, we still in East Atlanta. Today we just gonna specifically talk about the day when I got jumped on by the police when I was 16 years old. And it started right here. We was having a party at this house. That's when they didn't have moved here and everybody used to come hang out right here or whatever. And um, we were selling dope that day. Trap was booming doing numbers. There was a lot of a lot of moving around going on, just a lot going on, period. Uh me and Brock, we was riding. Well we would get phone call back to back, so we had to keep on moving around or whatever, whatever. So the last phone call we got was to go to Latonia. So we left here. Roll down to the end of the road. Officer Allen was sitting down there. And he worked for the Atlanta Police Department back in the days. He probably still do, I don't know, or whatever. But uh, as we got to the stop sign, he was sitting right there watching traffic or whatever. And uh, Brock pulled out and made a left. And I guess we looked suspicious because we were two young black boys. You know, Brock, he was like 17. I was 16, it was two days before my birthday. So I was 16, about to turn 17 in two more days. And um, when he pulled us over, he noticed me from East Lake Meadows. Cause he was the one who had locked me up for trying to steal a car from school that they were probably like a year before that. And I was living in East Lake. Anyway, I guess he remembered me from that little situation right there. And he just didn't like me or something, so he took out his hang out on me then. But we're gonna stop right here, and we're gonna go down to where everything happened at. So yeah, this is where everything happened at. This the stop sign right here. So, if we came down at McPherson, got right here to the stop sign. Officer Edison was pouring right there. By that sign right there. Watching traffic. So we got by right here. Pulled out. Made the look. And we got by down to that green sign right there. And that's when he came and pulled us over. Or whatever. So what he did was um when he, when he came to the car, he asked for Brock license, asked for the insurance. Brock gave me his drive license, gave him the insurance. He ran Brock information. Our bright information came back clean. And so when he looked in the car and he seen me, he came around to my side of the car and I had all dope in my pocket. I had probably about $2,000 worth of crack in my pocket. But that was, I was sending all crack then. So I had about $2,000 worth of crack in my pocket. So he came around to my side and he told me to get out the car. So when I get out the car, he started asking me, can he search me and all this and that. I didn't look suspicious. I didn't do nothing. I didn't say nothing. Like I said, he just had that angle built up or whatever, and he just wanted to do something that day. And so when I got out the car, um, he grabbed my jacket. And when he grabbed my jacket, I think I might have snatched back or whatever, and when I snatched back, he hit me in the head with the, uh, the little police stick or whatever. And when he hit me in the head, I fell on the ground. He just uh, beat me with it. He hit me probably about, he probably hit me about 15 times with it. And, um, he had bust my eye open, swelled up my whole face, and messed up my lip. My whole face was just like, it was, it was all messed up. It ain't, it ain't, see how cute it is now? It went cute like that after he did all that, you know what I'm saying? But after he did all that, um, all the dope had fell out of my pocket or whatever. And that's how I caught that cocaine case. Um, after he found all the dope or whatever, he put me in handcuffs put me in a car, and they took me to the hospital. And then that's when I seen Josh in the hospital. So they had beat up Josh that same night. My home by Josh, he from East Atlanta too. So, that's, yeah, that's how I caught that. That, that was my first dope case, my first crack cocaine case. So I had that crack cocaine case, then I had that big weed case, cause I had got caught with two pounds of weed. And so, that's where that, First dope case in that weed case come from. And um, you know, with that whole cocaine case, I ended up beating it because of what happened. 
but they stopped me with the weed case. That's why I need my phone here as my probation for the weed case or whatever. So that's it for that. That was just to give y'all a little bit of that story about why I got beat up by the police or whatever. What's going on? This your boy Kane. We live day eight of the documentary, the history of East Atlanta slash the story of Charlie Kane. I want to show y'all some. This building right here that you're looking at. This is the old Rayfield building. This building right here. This building, I guess they've been shut down for a couple years now. But um, this well, I used to come bag of groceries at when I was about in between the ages of 10 and 11, somewhere up in there. And um, me and my homeboy Nate, Nate doing time in prison right now, you know Nate from Edgewood. But we used to meet up right here, come down here and bag of groceries to make change, 50 cent dollar by taking grocery people cars and stuff like that. Just to make some little change and put it in our pockets. And over here, this was back the dollars back in the day. <laughs> oh, damn dollar right here. It, it been shut down for a couple of years. Third up, there was a rental center where you rent furniture and TVs and all that stuff from. Then they shut all this stuff down. The thrift store been right there for a long time. Then over there, the apartments right there, the red apartment used to be the Lexington. We used to hang out in the apartments over there back in the days, me and my brother and a couple other homeboys from my brother from Fred. That car wash all the way up in right there. Down there is Sugar Creek. That's the last spot Vito had. Vito went crazy. All my homeboy from duct tape. You know what I'm saying? B Green. That boy Ella boy Trouble. That's all them boys from that duct tape. Everybody just hang out down there. I don't know who down there now. I ain't been down there in a minute, but this shit right here. This is why I used to make my little chump change it back in the days. I was about 10 like a little. Bagging no groceries right here in Rayfield. Making 50 cents to a dollar. Every bag I took to a car. I don't know how my money Nate made back then, but I believe I made my money Nate, I don't know. But yeah, that's it. So now we're finna take y'all down to Memorial Drive. The first place where I got put on probation at when I was about 14 years old. And um, they committed me to the state or whatever. I don't know. Y'all know something about being committed to the state. But I'm gonna take y'all down there and let y'all check that out. Alright? Yeah. Everybody know this here right here. This one. Everybody from East Atlanta, everybody from Kirkwood, Edgewood, Renner Town, you know, Wild Street, everybody come down here and see me in you want to get the best hamburgers you ever had, this is where you come to. I don't think it's not one person in Atlanta, Georgia that don't know about this place that ain't ate from right here. You know what I'm saying? The best burgers ever. See what that sign say? And it's true too. Whatever you need to get right, that's all you had to do, come down here. Go in there and set the bar and order what you want. And it was on the pipe for now. Alright. This building right here. This it. Back in 94. That's when all my trouble first started. Well like my first time being locked up was in 1992. I was 12 years old. And I got locked up before the knife to a girl broke. Then I moved from East, East Atlanta and moved to East Lake Meadow. And when 
I moved to Eastlake Meadows, that's when all the stealing clubs started. And all the robbery started. And all the selling drugs started. So that's when my life went from one way to the other way. And so I think my first, my first and my second time getting caught stealing clubs, they could they put me on probation one time. Then the next time, they committed, they committed me to the state. And when they commit you to the state, it's like they can do what they want to do to you. They can come pick you up whenever they get ready. They can see you where they want to see you. They can just, they can just mess your whole life up what they want to. That's what they did to me. So the first time I got committed to the state, this is my probation paper. I never forget. Come in, Tom. I was in East Lake Meadows in the bed, sleep in my house, in my room, sleep. And them folks came from right here, all the way to East Lake Meadows, and picked me up, and they took me to the state. 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 They took me to the and sent me down the road for six months for stealing cars. I was gone for them little six months, missing everything. All my homeboy, they were going to the gate, they were going to all the clubs, to the skating rings and everything. Oh, I don't locked up missing everything, you know what I mean? Did them six months, came home. Two months later, Bankhead Highway, overlooking Lemon, high speed chase. Got locked up again, another stolen car. Went to Florida County Juvenile. They revoked my probation again. Committed me to the state again. That was my second time being committed to the state. So that time, they locked me up. They sent me away for nine months. You know what I'm saying? Did them nine months. They let me out on, we had to get our IDs made for each lady Meadows or whatever, whatever. So they let me out and do that right there. Then I had to go back or whatever. So, got out, did them nine months, came home. Then by that time, they were shutting Elay Meadow down or whatever. So then we moved back to East Atlanta. Like 1996, we moved back to East Atlanta. So this the building right here, this the old building, the old probation place right here, where they did everything that when you got on probation, whether you would commit to the state or whatever your situation was. This one you had come report it come get drug tested, come take classes, and you know, we were like 13, 14, and 15, so you didn't have to pay no type of fines or nothing like that. It was just scrape your time in juvenile or whatever they wanted you to do for whatever crime you committed, whether you robbed, stole cars, got caught stealing out of stoves. This is where you had to come do the thing here right here. And all my homeboys, they used to go to the gate, and the gate went down that way. They were back in, back in 1994. Um, then um, by the time 95, 96 came around, then they had Freak Me came around. And then by that time, I was staying in East Atlanta. And all my homeboys, by me being locked up, I wasn't really into the club. I was into the club thing, but I went into the heavy. And so by the time Freak Me came around, they was into all that, you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to make some money. So while they was out Freak Me, I was in the truck selling drugs, you know what I'm saying? And they came back telling me all they had was about the girls they met, all the girl boots they got the world and touching all that, but I wasn't stuck like that. I was trying to get that money right, you know what I mean? Alright, anyway, that's the history on that right there, man. We out of here. See that place right here? This place been around for a long time. When we were going to corn or either cream, everybody from Edgewood, Kirkwood, everybody from the parking right here, this is where they came and ate at. You see where that family dollar's at right there? Family Dollar used to be a checker back in the day. They turned a checker to a family dollar. But it was either that family, it was either the checkers or this place right here where you came to eat it. You know what I'm saying? My home by Grady. Grady from East Atlanta, man. Grady, they've been great favorite spot for home on how long. But that man still eat right here even to this day. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to that boy Grady, man. We're gonna walk down here. Uh, show y'all the last spot where I seen my home on Young Vito at before he went to prison. Where I actually had a conversation with him, man, and had a chance to sit down and talk to him before he uh, got locked up or whatever. But it was right here across the street at the barbershop where he had his son down here at the barbershop. We're gonna walk down here right quick. No, All right. Man, man. Right here. This was a lot of folks hanging right here too. 
But this is that place, man, why I actually had a conversation with my homeboy Vito before he went to prison, you know what I'm saying? Well, before he even went to jail. I was out of town and I got a phone call on my way back in town about what had happened or whatever. But yeah, this is the last place, man. I was pull right here. And he came out of the barber shop, came out of we had chopped it up for a minute, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I had left, went out of town. I was gone for a couple weeks out of town and on my way back in town, my partner JP had called me, you know what I'm saying? Told him what had happened or whatever, but as soon as he told me the whole, the story, not even the situation, but just the beginning of the story, I already knew what was going on, you know what I'm saying? I already knew everything. Just cause I know my nigga, you know what I'm saying? But this it, man, this man, every time I seen him, bro, right here. Other than him going to all his court dates and all that, and going to see him while he was in jail before he went to prison or whatever. This damn time I seen him on the streets right here. Did that boy Grady? Memorial Drive. That boy Scott. Got them right. Yeah, man. Know man. Zone C Ray, man. Zone C Ray. Need it. Alright. I I'll make it. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? We in the hood. Me in the projects. Sugar Creek. It's all uh, right here. This the old building where all my homeboy from Duck used to be at. Up in the front of there, a lot of my partners from East Atlanta used to be up there. My partner Squirrel, my homeboy Dula. That's a whole lot of folks from East Atlanta used to come in here and kick it, man. But this the last spot my homeboy Vito had. This is where Vito actually had his last spot at before he went to jail. You know what I'm saying? But in this building right here, when you used to come right here at nighttime, and get whatever it was you want to get. This whole area used to be dull. You know what I'm saying? So when you walk in that breezeway at nighttime, you couldn't see nothing. So I mean, you had to know what everything was in there before you even go in there. Whether you go in there and see B Green or whoever you go in there and see, you know what I mean? But um, it went down. A lot of videos been shot out here by a lot by adults. They did a lot of music out here. You know what I'm saying? You know, the police, they was on fire here. They came out here and laid everything down. You know what I'm saying? They came out here having food one day. But yeah. Let's see if they look hard right here. Yeah. What's up, bro? Apartment one. Apartment one right there. That was it, man. My partner, the old spot, man. My, before he went to prison. Well, before he went to jail, man. My boy Vito, my partner Cliff, man, you know what I mean? The boy used to sit right here and hold it down, man, you know what I'm saying? I used to come here and check on the man, make sure they was all right, you know, make sure everything was good with him. You know what I'm saying? But that's it right there, man, apartment one. A couple years ago, my boy Young Vito, he doing his time right now, man, you know what I'm saying, holding it down. But he'll be back out pretty soon. All right. This house right here, this is where my homeboy Demetrius Pillen used to live at, him and his mom and his brother, uh, way back in the early 90s. We used to be right here chilling, kicking and doing a lot of stuff right here when we were younger. And we had easy access to the park, as you can see. Brownwood Park, where everybody came and played basketball, jumped on the swings or whatever, what they decided to do back when we was little, little youngers, you know what I mean? You're running around here acting crazy, you sitting on but this park got a lot of memories and a lot of history, man. There were a lot of people did um, East Atlanta Day. Uh, had a lot of barbecues, a lot of cookout, a lot of family adventures and stuff like that. This where everything happened at right here at Brownwood Park. 
see um as you walk down. They got the deck right there. When you go up under the deck and barbecue and chill out or whatever, whatever. And um that's it man, basically just have a good time man. Come out here and just relax and just chill. Can't get have a picnic, barbecue like I said, cookout. Whatever it was you wanna do. Brownwell Park, East Atlanta, on Portland Avenue. And I'm gonna take y'all up to the top of the street, man. Show you where my little kid, where my little girl used to go to daycare. I used to walk my baby, man. The daycare every day, man, when she was about there be, you know what I'm saying? Walk her to school every day. All right. This why I don't want to go preschool and daycare when they were little. Uh, some of them still go here now. But many, many were about their bed, man, when she started going. I used to walk her up here, man, tow home my back every morning. Whatever. My next old neighbor, he working that tattoo shop right there, dirt. Taking that dope. He working that tattoo shop right there. So that's it for this one. Check y'all down here, man, show y'all a little history down here, a little bit on Glenwood. Then we're going to wrap it on around. All right? See this? This used to be Ace Hartwell back, like, um, back in the 90s. When they used to come and get all their tools and nails and screws and screwdrivers and all that type of stuff like that. This is what they used to be back in the day. Now you see they got that little fit on As you can see. see, they got folks on the inside working out. Getting right. Then across the street right here, that used to be a SunTrust bank. That's why I used to bank it when I was about 18 years old. SunTrust. Right now. There used to be a SunTrust. This whole parking lot, they ain't never redone this parking lot, but we used to always say you would need a little battery right here just to go from back and forth from Brownwood to Glenwood. Brownwood, Glenwood, back and forth. And everything that's around here is brand new. It'll been up for about three or four years now. But that's it for the area, man. We're finna wrap the thing on around. Take it back to the bottom of the hood, man. We on Stokewood, you know what I mean? This house right here, man, look at this house right here. This house is a completely different house. This was my home, but Ed Elwood stayed at him and his daddy, Billy, you know what I mean? This house was blue back in the days and it wasn't like this. They done, look like they done tore the whole house down and redid it, you know what I mean? There's a lot of history right here on this street, man, on Stokewood. Whole lot of trapping. A lot of my homeboys trapped on this street. A lot of spots on this street. A lot of my homeboys ain't seen in a while. I used to be up here, man. My homeboy, Hammerhead, Sinquay, 
That boy Brian Freeman. I ain't seen them boys in a while. Just a shout out to them boys. Shout out to my homeboy Demetri Pillen. Finna shut this thing down and take it on down to the other side now. Alright. What's up, what's up? We live. East Atlanta, Patterson, Metropolitan Avenue. This house right here, they done redid this house right here. But this was the first house uh, the first white person I ever sold dope to back in the days. Stayed in this house right here. And his name was Steve. He was kind of crazy, but he was cool too at the same time. No walk. This whole street right here, I always been nothing but a trap. So for everybody who don't know who I really know about East Atlanta, the history of East Atlanta, back in the 90s, East Atlanta wasn't nothing but a trap. Wasn't nothing but for people to sell weed, cocaine, crack, you know what I'm saying? That's what East Atlanta was about. So every street that you done seen from Eastside Avenue to Blake, to Marbury, to Matt William, to Glenwood, to Moreland, to Monument, Paisley, whatever street you name East Atlanta, it was a trap, you know what I'm saying? That was East Atlanta was back in the 90s. Straight trap, straight dope selling. If you weren't selling dope, then it was something dealing with girls, you know what I'm saying? One or the other. And if it wasn't that, if you was at the top of East Atlanta, then you was a car thief. If you was at the bottom of East Atlanta, you was a dope boy. You know what I mean? So you got the car thieves and you got the dope boys, East Atlanta. So we're at the bottom of the street now, now. you got Mother Dennis. That's my home by Bo. That's Bo Grandmama. Bo and all his cousins. All my partners, Bo, Maurice, man. All them grew up right there in that house right there. Them and their little cousins. This house right here. This is a duplex. You got side A and you got side B. This house right here, this is where we did a lot of dirt at right here. There was some girls moved over here from East Lake Meadows and some other place. And we got to know them. So we just came up here and basically did what we wanted to do out of there. Just took it over, you know what I mean? So, um, my homeboy Punky started going with one of the girls that stayed here. And my other homeboy started going with one of the girls. And my cousin started going with one of the girls. Then I started talking to one of the girls. So, um, we turned this to a whole different situation. This is where they lived at, but we ended up turning it to something else. You know how it is when good girls start messing with bad boys. They life be going this way. But then when they meet the bad boy, they life start going that way. You know what I'm saying? Whatever we want to do, that's what they gonna do. Make a long story short. So there was this whole situation with that house right here, man. My um, my little partner, he stayed here with his sister too. Him, they daddy, they mama, you know, stuff like that. And on down, that's Mother Dennis house right there. Shout out to my homeboy Bo, man. Bo Maurice. That boy, man. All that little cousin, man, who grew up in the house right here with them. That boy Ricky. Tilly, you know what I'm saying? Pete, that Maurice daddy. This it right here.
Watch out, boy. Watch out, boy. Watch out, boy. Yeah, that's it right here. Them other dinner house right here. That one of both little cousins right there. Hey. I used to go to church with him a long, long time ago. He was about there big. Yeah, he how 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 you were then? When you when we were going to church over there, um when me and brother didn't let them. You about eleven years old then? How old you enough? Twenty-three. Twenty-three? Yeah. Yeah, that's been a long time. How long you been growing dread? How long you been growing your dreads? Huh? Four years. Four years? Yeah. See that man out he was about that tall, man. He ain't had no hair back then. You know what I'm saying? That house right here got a lot of history when you stand down. They done redid their whole house right here. These house right here. City house right here. They done redid them house right there. And when Dirty J stayed right there. Dirty J, Naya, Bridget. All these houses right here got a lot of history in it right here. Right here, this house right here is real special to a lot of people in East Atlanta. The house right here was too. We got two people from East Atlanta that did die that stayed in their house. One that stayed in their house right here, she dead now. My homegirl, she had to move down to Lila Valley, man. She uh, was sick, she died down now. Right here. Nanny, that was a uh, bow grandmama, trees, lit, all them. That was a great family, man, a, a good family. House right here. This well, they grew up there right here. Rest in peace to Nanny. We're gonna um, set it on down for the day. Turn that thing back on tomorrow. All right. See that house right here? This house is new house. It was blue back in the 90s. My homeboy Lil Ron stayed here, him and his mama. Uh, I think him and his mama and his little sister or his little brother somebody. Anyway, I ain't seen my homie Lil Ron, man, since like 1990. I wanna say I ain't seen Lil Ron since 1995, so I don't know where he at. I ain't heard nothing from him. But Lil Ron, I'm staying in the house right here. Yeah, there's y'all, I'm staying in the house right there. My partner Lil Fred and him. His uh, him, his sisters, and his daddy. All these houses right here got a lot of history to it. Whole lot of history. The house down here at the bottom of the hill down there. I ain't gonna take y'all down there, but we'll probably go down there tomorrow. My brother used to go with this girl that stayed down there. When he was about 12 years old, he was going to coin. He was probably in sixth or seventh grade. Yeah. Line up in that time before he went to jail. That's where his first girlfriend stayed at, in the house down there. But we're gonna shut the thing down to tomorrow and get back at y'all. Alright? What it do, what it do? That's your boy Kane live, live East Atlanta. Another day on the history of East Atlanta. As you can see, we is on McPherson Avenue live. Um, you see that right there? Get a picture of that. That sign right there. And we left off. We, we left off of them two houses right there. Two houses got a lot of history in East Atlanta right here. But we're gonna start from right here. This house right here. This is where uh, my homeboy, my homegirl stayed in. My, my partner Rico and his sisters and his mama and their boyfriend. Uh, you had Yvette, Pam, Fifi, Ronnie. You had their mama standing in the house right here. This house used to be orange back in the day. I think it was orange when they stayed. I can't remember what color it was. But that's where they stayed at right now. 
Um, this house right here. One of these houses right here, a girl named Brandon used to stay here. And that was Rico Dream Girl. I can't remember what one of these houses he stayed in, but he was in love with this girl right here. And on down. This is where Juicy Red, Juicy Red, um, and all their kids stay right here. My still sister stay right here with them Mika. Sometimes, um, one of Red sons, Kino, who was raised up in the house right here, he dead now. Rest in peace, Kino. But they were they little spot, man. We used to come up here when we was little young kids and do all kind of crazy things right here. Their house right here, and they stay right here. This house right here wasn't right here. They ain't just gonna put this house right here right here. So this house right here brand new. He still let them to change the whole lot since we left. They done took a lot of the whole house down. Rebuilt them or just put new house right there with them. This house right here been here for a long time. We ain't never know who stayed in this house right here. But I always had look just like this though. Whoever stayed out, that's how they always have that living. My house right here. My home girl Tinkerbell. Her mama missed that before they moved from East Atlanta. This is where they stayed at. But I think they were from East Lake Meadows. I can't remember where they moved from, but I think they moved to East Atlanta from East Lake. And this right here. This is the monument. The, hyster the historic area, the monument of East Atlanta. Get a good view of that. As you can see, they have always kept it up. It still look good. It still look the same way when we were young. We used to come up here and sit on the wall sometime and just chill out, enjoy the shade, enjoy the trees. You know what I'm saying? Right here, the house right here, right next to the monument, you had the Scott family. You had Daphne, Ray Ray, Raheem, you had their dad, Ray, Ray Scott, Paul Scott, Tony Scott. Rest in peace, Tony Scott. Tony Scott dead now. But this is where they stayed at. This house right here, they redid their whole house. Then none of this looked like this right here back in the 90s. So all this right here is new. Even the mailbox. And the, the trees in the yard, all that stuff new. Alright. This uh how Miss Miss Doctor house didn't look like this at first either. They done redid their house right here too. And then on down right here, 1420, Matt Pearson. This well, Deep Paul Mike Six, all them moved to after they moved from down on the corner, East Side Avenue and Matt Pearson. They moved to their house right here. And when they moved from right there, then they moved up to the top of Matt Pearson before they just left East Atlanta completely. Rest in peace to Deep Mama, man. She died um, a couple years ago. So that's, you know. But this is how they stayed in right here. This house right here. This house now, all we have had different people just coming and going, coming and going. We ain't never really just got a chance to kick it with nobody that stayed there. But I ain't never stayed there long enough. And right here. Everybody keeps the down the road by their house right here. Miss Reed. Miss Reed. She was the East Atlanta candle lady. And she was there by the best friend. You know, we was all about this tall, probably about this tall at the most. And everybody used to come up here and help us sell candy and, you know, take care of the yard. Look at the yard. See the yard. But this is Tim. This is Tim, mama. And this is Tori, mama. Tim, dad. Now, Tim passed about two years ago. 
Rest in peace to Tim. I just see him and Reed come out and see what that is or whatever. But over here, this is right here. A lot of a lot of people that we knew stayed in the house right here. The first people that ever moved in the house right here that we ever met was man. Man in prison now. They were like 1991, 92. Man been doing time in prison, I don't know how long. Then um my other homegirl, she stayed there. Her and her mama and her brother and her daddy stayed there. She dead now. Her boyfriend killed her on Holly Road, uh, Mike. He shot her in the face on Holly Road and killed her um, about, I wanna say about two years, two years ago. Then Cunningham moved out. Then when Cunningham left, they went down the East Side Avenue. Um, their house right here, this is where Fred, Red, and Mike, and their sisters and their nieces and their nephews stayed at. Mike dead now. Uh, Fred and the other brother still living. Rest in peace to Mike. Rest in peace to Tim. Both of them stayed in their house right here. Well, one stayed here and one stayed there. Then Nene stayed there. So Nene, she did. Brock, grandma stayed right there. She did. Mm. Mike stayed right there, he did. So there's four people right there from East Atlanta. That's gone. All right. Let's walk. We ain't never really met nobody that stayed in the house right here. That house right there brand new. They ain't really bad. That house ain't even probably been there that long. And this house right here. This house got a lot of history in it. This was mine. Me, Jay, Eric, Nene, Jennifer, all them stayed right here. Those was all my folks. And they just had a bit of party right here the other night too. I came down here. They had about a hundred cars out here. That house right there just always have been there. People came and left, came and left. But that house right here, this is where Raymond stayed at, my home by Raymond. Raymond stayed in Stone Mountain now. But we used to come up here and play Nintendo. Play Super Contra, Contra, Pac-Man, Gallico. All that stuff right here. Lee still stay right here. But um, Wendy, Rodney, Spark, all them were cousins that grew up in that house. And we had Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara dead. Now somebody killed Miss Barbara. They um, poisoned her about two years ago. That's how she passed. She was hanging out with some of her friends and um, they was partying. And um, somebody poisoned her and, and she ended up dying from being poisoned. They had her funeral right there in Meadows, in Meadows right there in East Atlanta. But that was she stayed at, man. That was she grew up at. That was my T sister, Rotten the Spark, all their cousins. Um, I remember back in like 1991, 92, 93, the police busted their house one time and Raymond had a dog stay here and the police shot the dog and killed the dog. That was one of the first busts in East Atlanta. Well, it was some major happened there. Right here at their house right here. So we're gonna uh, wrap this up right here and go down to the dead end. I'm gonna show y'all one of the first trap houses that Block had that he, we first started trapping out of as young kids, just doing all kind of crazy mess. Just the whole East Atlanta always have been a big dope trap for us when we were young. But if you see where it is now, it's just a peaceful, nice residential area and it's ran by you know who, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna shut that down. Alright. What's up? See this dead end right here? This is where, this is one of the quiet streets right here. But this is where we did our thing at. Uh, this is the back of Bronx, I'm on the old house right here. And on down, we got right here. Lil' Lee. This is where Lil' Lee don't stay at right where Lil' Lee don't still stay right here. They ain't never going nowhere. That greenhouse, 
That house always been there, but we never know who stayed there. This house always been here, but we never know who stayed there. Then they got kids around there. You see they got the best of all right here. This house right here. This was Spark. Justin. That's Raymond and Cousin. This is where they stayed right here. Spark. Look who we, look who we see right here. Who that is? Oh, yeah. Scott. Yep. This house right here. This is where my homeboy Russell stayed at, man. Russell moved to North Carolina. He found him a girlfriend. And um, she seen how the girls, when you meet them girls, they want you to change your life and do what they want you to do. So she done moved in, man, raised right from Atlanta all the way to another state. You know what I'm saying? But this here right here, look at it right here. This block, this block old house right here. This was one of the first dope houses right here that we had in East Atlanta right here. I'm talking about the bottom of East Atlanta, not the top of East Atlanta, because Ron had the first house at the top, so we at the bottom of East Atlanta now. This is the first house at the bottom of East Atlanta right here. This is the Simmons residence. It's all my folk, man. They've been in East Atlanta half of their life. You got Rico, Marcin, Marie, Morel, Joyce, Mary, Snake, Paul, Rodney. You got Miss Simmons. This is their home right here. Been in East Atlanta forever. Ain't going nowhere. They've been in East Atlanta before I came to East Atlanta. So this is like family to me right here. Ain't never been a day where I can come down here if I need to eat, get my hair braided, take a shower, take a nap, or just come chill, look at some cave or something. Right here, you know what I mean? Been knowing these folk, man, since I was there. Yeah, high, man, you know what I mean? So they like another family. You know, George used to braid my hair when I was young, you know what I'm saying? You know me and Dobie, we've been tight since like, been tight like this, I don't know how long, you know what I mean? So everybody know the Simmons, man. They been here forever, so they know the majority of everybody that came through East Atlanta, everybody that lived over here, everybody that came and gone, you know, they been family. You know what I'm saying? So this here right here, the Simmons family. I don't know where they at right now, but I think somebody now I'm finna go in there and check because I gotta use the bathroom right quick, so I'll let y'all in a minute. Right here at this house right here, this next to the Simmons house. So we used to ride go cars at the house right here. We used to ride go car from the Simmons house to the house right here. Back and forth, back and forth, riding go cars all day in the backyard, just riding. The house right there, I forgot to tell y'all. Danny stayed in that house right there a long time ago. Before he started hanging up on Simmons and all that, that's where he stayed at. And, um, from Sam, he just moved on out the hood and just went on by his business, but that's where he stayed at, my boy Danny. All these houses right here, man, we used to kind of like do something at all these houses over here. They done redid that house right here. I don't know who stayed there now, but they done redid it. This house right here, I don't know who stayed there now, but you see where it is. Come on, let me show you something down here. See the house down here? Come on. See the house right here? It wasn't this color back in the days. I think it was white back in the day, but this dude 
He been here ever since we were little. And look at these cars. He been had these same cars since we were little. Get the footage of all the cars in the truck. So, is that thing? I was about this tall when I first moved East Atlanta. About nine years old, eight or nine years old. 36 now. Tall now. And that man been standing here since then. These same cars, you've been had these same cars. You know what I'm saying? But, all right, we out of here. Here. I'm at the top of Eastside Avenue in Glenwood. The 107 bus stop right here. Good folks come and catch the where well, they still do. I see the bus stop right here. And so we used to walk down their way to walk to East Atlanta Supermarket or to walk to Grand Central. Or we could, uh, we had a, a little shortcut over there on the next street over there. We used to walk through the shortcut to get to East Atlanta Supermarket. But now all kind of trees and everything. So now I'm do that. But right here is Blake. Come over here. This Blake right there, that's the other side of East Atlanta. That's where we used to go and catch the school bus at. Corn, when we were going to Corn Middle School, we used to go over there and catch the school bus. And um, that's over there with May, Van Elps, and all that right there. So we're going to get to that right there probably on another date. But that's, where, that's the other side of East Atlanta right there. So we done went to the top. Now we at the bottom. Now we're finna go down by Burgess and Matt William and all that. Show y'all all that. And it's gonna be a wrap for this side. Alright. Yeah. You see it right here? We on the corner of Blake and Glenwood. Over there. This house right here. Look at this house right here. No walk. This house right here. This whole house has been redone. So they done took everything that was right here and moved it. Because you see all this grass right here? All this was concrete. This was a driveway. This whole thing was a driveway. And it had um like a little brick wall going around. All this right here. Was a driveway. It wasn't no grass right here, period. And the house, it was a white house, and they kind of had some built around it, a frame around it. Well, kind of like in a hole, like. And the house was a brick house. And you see where it is right now? Come look at the backyard. I don't think nobody lives here yet, but I. I, I I guess my little moving in pretty soon or whatever. But look at this. This is a three-story house now. It was a two-story house back then, but it's a three-story house now. And um, back then, you know what it was going on right here. You know what I'm saying? Scrape trap. And I think they were bootlegging too at the time. And, um, right here. Right here. This for my homeboy Henry, big man, Melissa, and their daddy stayed there right here back in the days, Mr. Henry. And Melissa was my homegirl who I told y'all that got killed right here on Glenwood. She got killed right there in the middle of the road right there. And the people that ran her over, they still free right now to this day. And um, Melissa, she had just had her son before she had got killed. And like I say, I was locked up when Melissa had got killed. So I heard about everything once I had got out. And it was back in like 95 or 96 or whatever. And I was living in East Lake at the time. But I still would come to East Atlanta every day because, you know, I was from East Atlanta and I was living in East Lake. So this, yeah, that was that was going on with me then. I used to ride my bike from East Lake to East Atlanta all the time. Then I had got locked up or whatever. But I had seen Melissa before she had got killed. Before I even had got locked up, I had seen Melissa. 
feel like you just come right here and chill with Horn Big Man every day. Their house right here. Their house right here used to be woods. It used to be all woods right here. And then they tore the woods down and they put their house right here. So, uh, Kiki used to stay right here. My homegirl Kiki, she the salt lady. She the one that y'all see on Trust Tree with that big salt truck. They got the 100 pound salt for $20 an hour that. That's where she stayed at. Um, and right here, I asked other little homeboy that stayed here. They ain't really too much hair nothing going on with that now. But you know, I was cool with them. This house right here. Right here. Same thing. Had some little partner stayed right there, but they ain't really too much hair nothing going on. This house right here was wood. So both of these houses right here were all woods. And they tore the wood down and they put these houses right here. You see this brown house right here? Now, my homeboy, y'all, a lot of people didn't know them, but I was cool with them. But um, Robert, Dunt Dunt, and Gigi stayed right here with their mom and their uncle. Uh, and Red too, they had a brother named Red too. We used to come up here and chill and play Nintendo, Sega, and all that stuff back in the days. You know, um, we celebrated New Year's here a couple of times. You know, we was all young. Um, shotguns and all that stuff right here in the backyard. And when they moved, Red, Red, when they moved, wherever they moved to, Red ended up getting hit by a car and Red died. Red was the youngest brother out of the crew. But with, um, the house right here, this was another house right here, and they knocked, they knocked that house down, and then they rebuilt that right there. You see how I look, you see where it is. Okay. So we're gonna stop right here. Some of these houses have pretty much been around here. Some of them ain't. You can tell, you can really just look at the ones and tell the ones that's kind of new, the ones that they done redone, and all the ones that been here. This house right here been here for a couple of years. I think it's empty, I ain't sure. right here. I had a homeboy that stayed here. Um, we used to come out here and chill, whatever. We had a shortcut right here. As you can see, the shortcut ain't here no more. This shortcut right here took her from Paisley, from Paisley to Matt William, from Matt William to Paisley and Blake back to the trap house down here. So I'm gonna show y'all where the old traps by that down here. The uh, room house, it was another room house that we used to work out of back in the day. That when I first started selling crack, you know what I mean? I wasn't selling powder or weed and nothing like that then. It was just great crack for me. Right here, been here forever. It used to be blue. This house been here. That house right there, that's a newer house. I can't remember what was right there at first, but that one right there. Whatever right there, they must have knocked it down, or tore it down, or added on to something, or redid something. As you can see what they got in the backyard right there. The house right here, this blue house, that's where Haywood stayed at. And Haywood, that's Keppel husband now. They met, you know, back in like the early 90s or whatever. And they started a relationship, ended up getting married, having kids, moving into their own place, and so on and so on. The house right here, right here. The house been here forever too. This the Rocky Road. East Atlanta, we got about, we got about, I want to say 10 Rocky Roads in East Atlanta. 
people would never expect Houston not to have a rock and roll, but we got about 10 on. Just in case y'all didn't know that. Know what I mean? This shit right here. This is a, there was a rumor house back then. I don't know if it's still a rumor house back then. But this was well, when I first started selling crack cocaine. Crack. This is why I used to come right here. We used to have a cut right there. That go from East Side Avenue to right here. And that's the stop sign that I was showing y'all right there. So we used to come down here about 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Late at night, come down here, sit right here, and post up and just trout. You know what I'm saying? Me and my stepbrother Zate. Nobody else didn't really come down here. Just me and Zate. And um, when I was like 15, 16, I had bought me a car when I was 16. I used to drive my car down here, park my car right here, sit up in a trout house and just chill, sell my dope. You know what I mean? And just do what I do. So I was the first person from East Atlanta, 16 years old, that bought me a car. Then, by the time I was 19, now 18, 19, I bought another car. So I had two cars, 19 years old. Then, by the time I was like 21, I bought me a truck. So I had two cars in the truck at the age of 21. And that was straight dope money, you know what I mean? So I've been living a dope by life for a long time. So. Like I said, there was Haywood home house right there. Haywood mom and daddy stayed there. He stayed there with his mom and his daddy. The house right here. This was kind of like a part of the house. This one you had Freddy, Libet, all them there right here. They whole family basically stayed right here in the house right here. And they was always partying. So it was never a day in East Atlanta on Blake Avenue where it wasn't then going down there because whatever you wanted to do, that's what they did there. Whether you was playing cards, you were coming to get drunk, you were coming to smoke a blunt or two or whatever, whatever, that way it all went down there. All right, that walk. Man, what's up now about Fred? Man, I ain't seen Fred in a long time. You know what I mean? Right here. I told y'all before, that's what flip them stayed at. The last people that I knew that stayed in that house right there, but before Flip them stayed there, Mr. Roosevelt stayed there. Mr. Roosevelt was a cool old man that everybody in the neighborhood, you know, were cool with. He was cool with all us, you know. Everybody had a little, uh, you know, cool little friendship relationship with him before he moved or whatever. Ain't nobody seen him ever since he left. But that who stayed in the house before Flip them stayed there, Mr. Roosevelt. This house right here, this house right here is a new house. This house right here went right here. I think it was trees right here, or either another house right here. And then they redid it and put that right there. The house right here. And I told y'all, Nikki stayed right there. I just found out Nikki had passed uh, a couple weeks ago. She passed or she was sick or whatever. I didn't find out what was wrong with her, but I heard that she had passed or whatever. This house right here, this is where Mr. John stayed at. Mr. John was a, uh, he was a white guy from the neighborhood. He was real friendly. And he been around East Atlanta for a long time. So everybody kind of respected him and liked him because he was a cool person, you know what I'm saying? This house right here, 
this what Ted stayed in. Ted is the man that y'all see every time y'all get off the highway. He be right there asking for the center of the quarter. Acting like there's something wrong with him. But that's where he stayed right there. So you see where he's living there, right? He living good. You know what I'm saying? Right here. This is where my homeboy Jerome I'm staying in. Jerome and his sister stayed right here. When we were born the Burgess or whatever. We used to come home from school and go in there and play Nintendo, play the whatever, whatever kind of game they had. You know what I'm saying? This house right here. This house wasn't right here. It was it was land, a whole lot of land right here. And um, that was it. So they put the house right here. This house right here. This house was another rooming house. And it was another truck house. So every rooming house in East Atlanta became a truck house. There were some people that moved, I don't know where they came from, wherever they came from, they brought some dope wood. You know what I'm saying? And they, when they brought the dope wood, they got to know all this from the neighborhood and they started serving us. You know what I'm saying? And their house right here, it's on boots, you know, folks. Booty shoe, top of I mean, um, that little brother named Uncle and all that. That's their daddy, brother. Right here, staying in the house right here. I forgot his name, because I ain't seen him in a long time. That's who stay right here. This house right here, this is what Shawanda stayed in. And that was Joe Simmons' girlfriend before he died. Well, I don't know if it was his girlfriend before he died, but once upon a time, that was his girlfriend. Her and her family stayed right there. They done, um, they done added on to the house in the bottom and then the side of the house. I want you to get a good look at the side of the house, man, and show what they done did to the house right here. So you got to go over there, man, and get a good look at it. You see all that, everything they done added on to the house down there? So they done made the house really look like a little slick apartment or something. You know what I'm saying? You see all that down there? That, all that stuff went on there. And you see they got two Herbie Kerbers out here now. You see all that? Alright. Right here, these two houses right here. Um Fat Tay and Doe Button stayed in the house, but I don't know. I think it was different right here to be exact. Doe Button stayed in the house right here first. My homeboy Rico Simmons and him his family. When they moved out. Fat Tatum moved in. And when Fat Tatum moved out, I don't know who moved in ever since Fat Tatum moved out. But that's how I look right now. I don't know if they've been looking out there ever since Fat Tatum moved, but that's how I look right now. And just to let y'all know, we on the way to Matt Williams. You know what I'm saying? See this house right here? The big tall house, that's a brand new house. I don't even think that house was right though. If it it might have been another house right there and they knocked it down. But this house right here, this house right here always have been over here. They just never associated with nobody from East Atlanta. And this blue house right here, where the little beetle bug get. This is what Angel, Kelbra, they mama. They little brother JJ, they little sister, all them grew up in the house right here. And um, we used to all come out here and kick it and just chill. And this house right here, this was chocolate, Santeria, yo, all them stayed in the house right here. And them was all our homegirls from the hood. So we used to always come out here and chill and kick it. You see all these woods right here? All these woods. It was a creek right here. We used to go down here in, in, in the woods and play in the creek back in the days. Get muddy and dirty and all that. And then these woods right here in front of you, these was the woods right here that we used to um, have a shortcut right here to take us to Main Interior. And we can go that way and go to, um, some people just go to school that way to walk the train that way. Some people just use to go on the back street over there. 
And that's where Mount Boo graded and all them stayed on that side over there. This house right here, this was some of my homeboys stayed there right here back in the days. Um, I think they named one name with Eddie. I ain't seen them in so long, I can't even remember their name, but this is where they stayed at in the house right here back in the days. I think one name was Eddie, one name was Jermaine, and one name was Pat, not a fact. That's where they stayed at right there. They done redid that whole house right there. It, it, it look a lot better too. That house right here, I had some other homeboy that stayed in that house right here. Um, we used to have a basketball goal right here in front of the house where we used to play basketball at. You see the house right here? This is where Mr. Brown stayed at. Mr. Brown and his wife stayed there for a long time. I don't know if they still stay there or not. But they were Mr. Brown stayed at. And right here. I can't remember who stayed there, but somebody stayed there too. I want to say my step, but no, nah, that ain't where they stayed at. They stayed right here. Mario, Zeke, Miss Janice, Miss Carter. No, Miss Janice, she passed. Miss Carter, she passed. Rest in peace to both of them. They stay right here. This house used to be red back then. They painted the yellow, as you can see. Oh, I don't remember who stayed right here. Somebody stayed right here. I can't remember who, but somebody did. Somebody I knew, because I knew everybody from East Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Right here. This was Ed, this was Dula, Punkin, Lil Tony, Eddie Bird. All of them stayed right here. And for everybody who don't know Eddie Bird, Eddie Bird is the man that used to fix everybody's car from East Atlanta. He was the East Atlanta mechanic. So whenever you needed a motor put in, a transmission put in, you need a tie change or anything that you need done to a car. Did where you came to Eddie Bird. This is where Tammy stayed at Eddie Bird's daughter. She stayed right here in the house right here. So her dad and her mom stayed right here and she stayed right there. You know what I'm saying? Now look at that house right here. I forget who stayed in the house right here, but look how they done did it now. You see this? They done created it a little bit, made it look good. Look at the mailbox. How they did the mailbox. Okay. Across the street right here. This house right here. This is where my homeboy Tony stayed at. Tony, Amelia. Um, they stayed right here. Him um, and his mama and their daddy, they stayed right here. In the house right here. Tony in prison right now. He caught a murder case. Because people used to always hate on Tony try to rob him, try to you know, do this, that, and the third tongue because everybody thought he was gay. You know what I'm saying? You know how people try to treat gay people, you know? They don't show no type of love. This, this right here, this land right here, this was the shortcut to Paisley, what I was telling y'all about. So we had this shortcut come right here, to Paisley to Blake. From Blake to Paisley to right here to Matt Williams. Right here, this is where my um, grandma stayed at before she died. And, um, my cousin, Lil' Keith, Big Keith, this is where they stayed at right here. You, know, you may go to Trust Tree and find Lil' Keith and now nah, Trey. You'll find Trey in Trust Tree right now. Uh, I want to say that house right here where BJ stayed at my, my, my home with BJ and his mom and his sister. BJ was a white boy, but he was a black boy, you know what I mean, to us. His skin was white, but he was black. People tried to kill BJ a long time ago. They shot him in the head and left him in the car for dead down there um, in Lila Valley or whatever back in like 1992. They tried to kill him. They tried to rob him because he had a box Chevy with some rims or something on it. And that's when they was uh, real hot with the box Chevy, stealing box Chevys all the time. Right here, one of my customers stayed right here. One of my hard players stayed right here. Uh, I think he passed too back in the days. So now we on up to the top of Matt William. Look at the house, get a good glance at the houses.
see the house right here? Not the blue house. There's the house next to it right here. Uh, my homegirls, my homeboy, they stayed right there. My homeboy out of his sister, his mom, um, his sister Shantae, she died right there, man, when she was living right there. Um, I'll never forget that day, man. We was out here playing one day. Well, we was over there playing one day. We were going to Burgers, and I'll never forget that day. We was over there playing, doing something in the backyard. And that's how I got that cut on my stomach. Oh, uh, they had the little uh, clothesline hanging down low. And we were running around in the yard doing something. And my, I got caught. The house right here. This is where my home where Stefan stayed at. I went to Burger with Stefan. But we used to go back there and play basketball in the backyard, man. You know what I mean? Get on that ball, get on the fucking boys and kill them, you know what I'm talking about? Right it's the church I was telling you about right here. This is the church right here. This is the church right here. This is the church right here. I'll never forget that day when um, the police tried to hit the spot one day. And they was all parked behind the church. They had the, uh, the FBI and the DEA and all them parked behind the church. And they had on their little black masks and you know, they was all suited up. Thought they was sneaking, thought about it and see them, you know what I'm saying? And I seen them. And I had to call my homeboy, let them know they was over there, posted up, trying to do something. But anyway, long story short, shut that whole thing down, you know what I mean? Everything they was trying to do got shut down. Right there, man. We had my little partner had a little spot down there. We used to go kick it, and that's the other side of the cut right there. See the house right here? Right here, Paisley. Back then, it was a duplex. There was a side A and a side B, and my partner had that spot, and he was trapping out of it, doing numbers out of it. And that's what they were trying to hit right there. So that's why they were parked in the back of the church over there. So they could run up in the spot. So by the time they did run up in there, one day and then though, you know what I'm saying? Cause I had a car where I told them they were right there. That's the spot right there. But they done redid the whole house. So now it's just one house that's not duplex no more. As you can see. Then that house right next to it, that's the low spot right there. D-Lo old spot. And then ain't nobody, don't nobody stay there. That's the spot where they be trapping it, you know what I'm saying? Sitting right there, getting drunk, smoking weed, getting high. Cars in the backyard, doing 